Hi, this is Michelle at SparkFun. Today we're going to be going over how to set up an X2 gateway. Uh, basically, it's a little box that connects your XB to the internet. So you're probably wondering what a gateway is. Gateway is basically a device that connects two different types of protocols. It might be serial to 802.15.4 that an XB uses. It might be your cell phone, which translates audio into a cell signal and then a cell signal back into audio. In this case, we're actually going to be using 802.15.4 that the XBs use, uh, even though they wrap it up in a little Zigbee protocol. We're going to be interfacing that with TCP IP, which is what the internet uses. When you get your X2 device, you're gonna, it's going to come in a nice little box like this. Uh, you're going to get four items. You're going to get a power cord, an Ethernet cable, your X2 device, and a CD. Uh, you're going to plug in your Ethernet cable and your power. If you notice, you're going to get a couple of little green LEDs right here. You're also going to get a couple of lights here on the Ethernet jack. Once it's all plugged in, you can go ahead and hide it away somewhere. You're not really going to need access to it again. One of the first things you're going to need to know is the IP address for your X2. Your X2 should have come with a CD in the box. Uh, there's, on there, there should be a program called devicediscovery.exe. If you don't have it, you lost your CD, whatever, don't worry about it. You can download the file as well. We're going to go ahead and open that. Uh, in this case, there's actually going to be two X2s plugged in. One's in my office, one's the one we just plugged in here. Uh, the MAC addresses are listed. The MAC address is going to be on the bottom of your X2. It's also going to be on the box here. Where the one we want is going to be the one that ends in 4AB. So we're going to go ahead and double click on that. It's going to open it up in your favorite web browser or Internet Explorer. Uh, if you see here, it's going to show you the MAC address, the IP address, um, and a couple of other things. You can play around with some of the settings, um, but for the most part, we're not going to need most of them. The next set, step is to set up your X2 so that you can actually use it from anywhere in the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to Remote Management. Uh, what you want to make sure is that the Enable Remote Management and Configuration box is checked, and then the server address is developer.idigi.com. Uh, you probably want to have automatically reconnect to the server after being disconnected as well. Um, the default of 10 seconds should work fine. You probably don't even need it that often. You may also want to go into security and actually put in a password. I'm not going to go ahead and do it now, but in the future you might want to so people that you don't know don't get in. Next we're going to go to iDigi's website. One of the nice things is that you can have up to five gateway devices hooked up to the same account. You can log in from wherever you want and have quite a bit of control over them. So once we go to developer.idigi.com, we'll actually see you can log in here. We're going to go ahead and click are you a new user. Uh, once you do that, you can go ahead and make your own account. Um, I already have an account, so we're just going to go over here and log in. Once you're logged in, you'll see the devices. This is the device that's already connected at my desk. We're going to go ahead and hit the Add Device button. It's going to be a little blue plus sign here. Um, it should actually get, find the device for you. Uh, if it doesn't, you can grab the MAC address either off the box or off the actual X2 device and add it manual. If we look here, it did find the device, so we're going to go ahead and add that. Uh, it does take a few minutes to actually connect. Uh, it says device added, so we should be okay. In the meantime, we're actually going to take a look at the program we're going to run on the device. Uh, the X2 is actually run Python. Um, some of our friends at Digi wrote a program for us to help us do this. Uh, if you look here, there's a destination address. This is actually going to be the address that's found on the next beat chip. Uh, this is the one that we're going to be interfacing with, so we're going to go ahead and put that in here. Um, so each time you do this, you're going to have to change the address if you're going to use a different XB. So we're going to go back, hit refresh, and it is connected. So if you go ahead and click on it, you'll see it actually pulls up quite a bit of information on here. Uh, we start with the model number, the MAC address, um, some, Ethernet, or some of the internet information, uh, some network information, some information on XBs, and this is actually with Python. This is where we're going to upload code. So we actually don't want that guy in the auto start settings, but we're going to go ahead and hit upload. You can actually upload from either here or just by typing in the actual IP address on that screen we were at earlier. So we're going to go ahead and browse for the file that we want. I've actually got the file on a flash drive, so we're going to go ahead and make it over there. Hit OK, and now it's uploaded, and you can see it here. Uh, it's listed in the Python files. We're going to go ahead and type that name up here. Okay. 
and click the auto start and save. Really that's all we're going to need to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in here and then we're going to open up a terminal window. So now that we've got the XP connected, the other part of this is actually a website that you can log into, similar to iDigi's site um, that we've created, that will let you actually type in commands. I've actually gone ahead and opened it on my phone. It's one of the nice things, you can go ahead and do this from anywhere. And then we're going to start typing something in and hit send. Once you go ahead and put it in and hit send, it's going to talk to the X2. The X2 is then going to send the information to your XP, and lo and behold, we've got text on the screen. This may not be useful, you don't necessarily need to do a chat program, so we're going to try a couple of other things. This here is an Arduino with an XP shield and an LED attached. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. Um, it's set up so that when it receives a capital H command, it will turn the LED on. LEDs are nice, lamps would even be nicer. You can control quite a few things. Go ahead and type in capital L and it turns off. Next we're going to try this little remote control car. Stick this in here, turn the power on, and it's not going anywhere. Hopefully now I'm going to go ahead and type in a W on here, and our little car goes off. I can go ahead and stop it from here too. This may not be something you're going to do in real life, especially from your phone in another state. You don't really need to control your remote control, but you're also going to have a lot of things you can do with this. You can send any serial command and control anything you want from anywhere on the internet, including a smartphone. So that's an introduction to the X2s. They're actually pretty powerful guys. They run on Python. You can write a lot of Python scripts and you can access them from anywhere. Uh, you can do lots of stuff. You can upload code. You can update your firmware on your XPs. You can do a lot of stuff remotely. Um, make sure you are using a Series 2 XP. They do not work with the Series 1. They've actually got a Series 2 device uh, with the coordinator firmware actually pre-installed. Um, but like I said, it's a great introduction. Have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.